2014. The world's fastest ever manned aircraft. On the 3rd of October, 1967, it hit a massive Mach 6.7. That's over six times the speed of sound. It looks a little like a bullet. And bullets have been breaking the sound barrier for centuries. We've only had supersonic planes for 60 years or so, but humans have been able to make things go faster than the speed of sound for centuries using these. Firearms. This is a replica 1853 Enfield rifled musket. Let's try it out. The round exits the barrel at 688 miles per hour. That's faster than my supersonic flight with the Blue Angels, so you'd think this musket ball is also going supersonic. But it's not. The closer you are to sea level, the higher the speed of sound. So to go supersonic down here, the musket ball needs to exceed around 760 miles per hour. And this old gun can't pull that off. That definitely had some power, but this is a 19th century firearm. Let's compare it with something a little more modern. That's more like it. This is a Barrett M8250 caliber sniper rifle. And this is what it shoots, which is pretty intimidating considering I felt a kick from that musket. I don't really know what to expect from this guy. It's a powerful piece of technology. And when it fires, you know it. There is a huge blast. The bullet exits the barrel at 1,984 miles per hour. That's 2,910 feet per second, nearly three times the speed of sound. Superman faster than a speeding bullet? I don't think so. But again, to go faster, you need more power. The kind of power you can get from a tank. Shells like this can move at 4,400 feet per second, 3,000 miles per hour. But even this isn't as fast as it gets for man-made projectiles. Shooting those guns was pretty cool. But I just got a call from NASA saying they have something special to show me. I'm headed to Mountain View, California, to NASA's Ames Vertical Gun. So here we are, and I gotta say, it's not totally what I was expecting. You know, when I think of NASA, I think of high-tech, sci-fi, polished metal surfaces, flashing lights. This looks more like a garage. But most cool things were invented in someone's garage. So let's check it out. Hey, hey, Pete, how are you? Good. This is it. So this is a gun. I got to say, it doesn't look like any gun that I have ever seen before. Yeah, this is, this is special. This thing fires small bullets to really high speeds. This bizarre machine is the Ames Vertical Gun, one of the fastest and most powerful guns on the planet. Professor Pete Schultz uses it to research meteorite impacts. He's going to show me how objects moving at high speeds are packed with energy, turning even the smallest things into devastating projectiles. The impact chamber is where it all happens. So, 
we're literally staring down the barrel of a gun. Yeah. What are we gonna What are we gonna fire at today? Well, take that. So what is it? Oh, it's heavy. It's marble. Solid piece of marble. Yep. What would a, for example, a rifle shot do to this? Well, it would probably just bounce off, and we'd have a sort of a little nick. So it would just give it a little dent. Yeah. What kind of bullet are we gonna use? Here it is, right here. <laughs> it's tiny. This is this is just a little bit bigger than a BB. That's it doesn't even need. weigh as much as a BB. That's all you need. What's this made out of? That's aluminum. This little tiny thing <laughs> is is gonna smash something that a bullet can't smash. I can't wait to see. I have to say I'm a little I'm a little skeptical. The gun is raised into firing position. The BB will exit the barrel at a staggering 11,800 miles per hour. The countdown begins. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, you see, I told you, nada, nothing left. Can you back that up? Can yeah, you see yeah. that? Yeah, let's, let's go back. Let's, let's, here we go. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's already filling the chamber with, with gas. That is vaporized projectile. That little BB, it's gone. That little it's, piece of aluminum. It's been turned into vapor, and we're seeing this whole thing begin to explode. That we, tiny, tiny little BB. Turn that block of marble basically into dust. As long as you've got it going fast enough, that's enough to do the damage. And that's the big lesson. Right, when something goes fast, it's just packed full of energy. Inside the impact chamber, I get a close-up view of the destructive power of high speed. Oh, oh, oh man, it just smashed it to smithereens. It's just completely obliterated. So this is all that's left from that block of marble. I mean, a bullet from a rifle would not be going fast enough to do anywhere near this kind of damage. No, no. But meanwhile, this tiny little BB has just incredible devastating power. It's a powerful lesson. Even the smallest objects gain a devastating power if they travel fast enough. 11,800 miles per hour, enough to obliterate solid marble. But what if humans wanted to travel this fast? It turns out that's much harder. The problem is, even if you could survive the initial force of being shot out of a gun like this, the air resistance from our atmosphere would cause you to literally burn up. If you want to go really fast, you have to go somewhere where there is no air resistance. You've got to go to space. I'm in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center, and behind me on that giant launch pad is the fastest manned vehicle in existence today. It's the Space Transportation System. You might know it as the space shuttle. Made it. Start. Five, four, three, two, one, and lift off of Space Shuttle and land. The shuttle made its maiden flight in 1981. It's the world's first reusable spacecraft. The bulk of its power comes from the two solid rocket boosters. They're like fireworks. Once you light the fuse, you can't shut them off. Combine the two solid rocket boosters, generate 6.6 .6 million pounds of thrust, which doesn't mean that much to me. But it's about the same as the thrust generated by 400,000 subcompact cars, which also doesn't mean that much to me. But it might help you out. Nine minutes after launch, the shuttle reaches space and around 17,500 miles per hour. So how fast is 17,500 miles an hour? Well, I'm going around 60 miles per hour right now. So I can cover five miles in about five minutes. The space shuttle can do that in one second. Five miles per second. That's orbital velocity, enough to take the shuttle to an altitude of up to 600 miles. But even at this height, objects are still affected by Earth's gravity. To 
To travel further, you need something like this. A Saturn V rocket with enough power to achieve escape velocity. That's the speed needed to escape Earth's gravitational pull. 25,000 miles per hour. Only 24 people have ever achieved escape velocity, and they've all been in one of these. This is an Apollo command module. This is as close as we've ever come to a human bullet. 25,000 miles per hour. That's faster than the space shuttle. That's faster than any other manned vehicle ever built. No human has ever gone faster than the astronauts who went to the moon in one of these.